Alright, so as you can tell, you can see where this tree is falling behind us. This place probably looks a little familiar, but there's a lot more water in it right now. This is the farm I caught those two beavers you've seen in the previous episode of Missouri Hometown Hunters. Um, we caught them too, the water went down, and uh, we thought the problem was fixed, but there's been a lot more beavers moving to this creek. And you can see they have a dam somewhere, and this water is extremely high. Highest it's ever been. So anyway, we ended up coming back here, and it is November 29th, and trapping season is actually here, it's among us. So not only are we doing our animal, our animal damage control, we're also getting some fur in the freezer too. So we just now rolled up, we came right here to our crossing, and of course the dens that we found, I mean, the runs and dens aren't as heavy as they were during the summer, but we do know that they're in here. The water is extremely high, they do have a dam, so we're gonna try to get some traps set. Came up, and the first thing we found is this, is this trail. Now this trail, it's pretty heavily used going up here up the bank. So here we have a number three duke on a stake. We're going to put that duke right here in the water where they're going to step out in and out of the water. So uh, anyway, let's get this trap set and I'll show you guys the finished product. Whenever it's done, hope we get a nice good beaver in this trap. Beaver, and I know there's otter in here too. So beaver, otter, whatever. But our main focus is beavers. So. Um, Let's get after it, guys. All right, so the trap is set. We got our hammer and made a little ledge there where they actually step up onto the trap pan. You can see the pan right there. Our stake is in. And hopefully when they come up in or out of the water, they'll step around that pan and they'll be caught. So let's move on to spot number two. Let's see what else we can find to catch some critters. Here we go. All right, so we just, we just actually just walked from uh, the beaver trap we just said walking back to the truck to get a couple more supplies and i don't know how i didn't see it walking down but it's actually a good pretty good uh, coon trail right here right right in front of the truck anyway it's uh, coming right beside the creek it crosses the the little cross the the road here that they can drive through and goes right up through there and we set a trap there just now actually and it's going right here to this little lagoon so uh we've got a Duke uh, dog proof right here and we're gonna do I made some homemade bait so we're just gonna pour that right in there people say you don't need to fill it I do it both ways to kind of move them in just make sure your bait is below the trigger that way when they keep reaching for more bait they'll lift up on the on the trigger and they'll get caught anyway that trap is set we're gonna move on and hopefully we can actually find a good location to catch these beavers Besides that, that crossing down there in the in the water, it's a good spot down there. Don't get me wrong, but I know there's got to be some of the den or run some up out of the water even better. So we're gonna keep on looking and see what we can find. So we were walking the creek bank and we seen a heck of a coon path. You see all the tracks coming through there. It's going right along the edge of the water right there, and it is beaded down to the mud. And I found this little ledge right here. By the water now this would be also place for a cage trap so what we're going to do we hit what we did when i set my cage traps i make sure it's steady as can be whenever they walk in that i do not want that trap to move so i got little twigs in each corner right there as you can see the back didn't need any stakes it's level enough that if they walk in it won't move but what we're going to use for bait in this trap is Special Kitty Ocean and White Fish Tuna Dinner. And I like the pate. It's more pasty. You have to work at it more and spends more time on the trap. So instead of throwing the whole can back there, which I've done before, I've had Coons take the whole can out without setting the trap off. So I'm just gonna dump it in there. There we go. So I got on top of the trap. And I'm gonna use the lid to the cat food. Just to push it down in there. And all that juicy stuff there. I'm gonna put it right here on this limb. This little twig here just to get some more scent out there. And that's all it is, guys. That trap set. See, doors up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna be pretty much a guaranteed catch out there with that trail going through there. Weather wise, this week's gonna be extremely warm. 
highs and 40s, 50s, and possibly even 60 every now and then, lows in the 30s, 40s. So these critters are gonna be moving, they like warm nights, so. That's a couple traps set so far. We gotta get more traps set if we're gonna make this more successful out here. So let's keep moving on, everybody. Okay, so we have a pretty good heavy trail coming under the fence here. It's all cattle pasture on one side, and this brushy fence road, and the trail's coming right here through this brush. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to set a blind set with no lure, no bait. Pretty much we're gonna walk right through this trail and walk right in the trap. I already got the trap bed here with the trap in it and the trap's already state ground. And um, I got it bedded down solid with some with some dirt from, from prying all that dirt and everything to make the trap bed. And what we're gonna do, we're also just cover it with some grass. So we're, that's all we're really gonna do. Let it cover some grass here. It's about one of the easiest sets to make here for your coyote and uh, anything that follows trails you're gonna be catching this. Pretty much it could be coons, uh, coyote, bobcat, fox. I've caught a lot of fox doing this. I have caught coyotes doing this before. And really it's, it's pretty simple. You just cover it up with some grass and a little bit of dirt. It's supposed to get warmed. It's supposed to be warm all week. I'm not really worried about this trap freezing down with all the dirt I'm throwing on top. But uh, let's see here. There, really, I mean, even that pants will exposed. Pretty much when the coyotes and foxes and bobcats coons that come through there, they're gonna be traveling through there at a pretty good rate. So, I mean, yeah, the trap pants will exposed. I'm not really gonna worry about it too much. But then, I'm gonna take some big old tufts of grass. It can be right here next to it, don't really matter. Not a big old tuft, it can be something like that. I'm gonna place it on each side of the trap, just like that get down a little bit further a little bit more here put it right here on this side and what that does is dang near forces that critter to step you don't like a force them; they usually choose to do it but they're going to step right in between that blade of grass around to the trap pan and really that's all we do there is no bait no lure, all there is is a trap. So, we're gonna set it set and hope we catch a predator this week in this trap. All right, so it's the next morning. You guys seen me set this trap yesterday when I filmed, and we have a really pretty, he's a, kind of a medium size, a fairly large coon. And yeah, we got him over here, and then over here, he followed me. That live trap we set yesterday. Our main target was coon. But we ended up catching a big old silver possum. So anyway, we're going to go in and get these critters taken care of, reset the traps, and come back tomorrow and hope to catch more. Big old boar coon. Looks like a nice one in that trap. Yeah, he is. Big old fat thing. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah, we caught, there's a trail going right down through here. You kind of see it going by that tree, barely. And then, there's a coon toilet on down that way a little bit. Bunch of poop on the ground. So that's how I set the trap here, we got him. Cool, let's get him taken care of. One of my all-time favorite spots of trap. I've always, usually always set a live trap here. Mm -hmm. But I also said a DP this that time. No, the other one, the other one yesterday was pretty small too. Was it? Yep. But you can look at this trail. I mean, it's kind of hard to see now, but that trail wasn't there last year going through there. Mm. It's usually going right, right up along this. So, cool. And it goes right along the bone there. Yeah. Cool, we'll get him taken care of. All right, so we've caught two coons in this area right here so far this year. And really, I'm gonna catch them. I'm gonna keep on setting the trap. You see the good catch circle there. The catch circles are really good. Pretty much, I mean, it's all the scent from the coons are there, so the coons will hang around there to check out everything. And same thing, my favorite, the DP with a little bit of my homemade coon candy in there. So uh, we'll come back tomorrow. Hope it'll go three for three. Won't we, Grampy? <laughs> Alrighty, let's head on out and get more. 
Got a little audience of the cows there too. Alright, so we got a nice great big old coon here in the, in the dog proof trap. We caught on my specialty little homemade bait we did during the summer with a, with a little bit of a candy corn and sweet cereal. It's any kind of sweet cereal you got. And actually, I found some dried out cotton candy and some Pop Tarts. Crushed her all up, made some homemade dog proof bait. Anyway, what we got here is a really good trail going from this island to brush here. We're going to clear right down to the other tree line over here to the ditch. There's no slough over here in the ditch. The coons are running up and down like crazy. But yeah, I mean, I got the trap set. You set that dog for the front middle of the trail, and they're going to bump the nose and they're going to get caught in it. Line set here, and our main goal was actually coon, coyote, fox, whatever it's called in this path here. But you know, we caught a pretty little skunk here. And uh, I hate skunks, I really do. They're a pain in my butt. A lot of people will get them and skin them. We're going to take care of him and see what we can do to do something with him. So, he is a pretty skunk, I'll give you that. A lot of white on him. Anyway, we're going to get him taken care of, move on, and hope we get something better in the traps besides the dang skunk. All right, so this, we actually caught this coon on the same, tra same exact trail we caught that skunk on. The skunk we caught is right down here. And uh, again, caught him, that one's in a blind set uh, for a predator. Uh, honestly, whenever you set trails like this, it, any, you know, not only coons run them, but anything will run them. Like we said, we caught a skunk. I also caught foxes and coyotes in these two before. Not in DPs, but in blind sets. But we caught this kind of DP on my special <laughs> bait I made with the candy corn stuff. And um, again, you bait it, sit right in the trail, you're going to catch them. So uh, we got about a few more traps to check in this bottom down here. A couple mink traps and coon traps. So. Uh, Let's get this coon taken care of and we'll move on. <laughs> we have a huge boar coon here. He's great big and he's gray. He's an old, old coon. See his ears are all torn up from fighting. Anyway, uh, pretty much there's an old drainage, an old drainage ditch that goes from the, from the field here going down to the main uh, Floyd Creek behind us. And there was a trail coming up out of the creek cutting across the field but right into this brush right here. And really what we did, the same bait I always do. The candy corn works every time, guys. So anyway, this game's taken care of. We've got a few more traps to check, and we're going to move on try to get some more even set today. Let's have fun. They're having the ball, guys. This is what, coup number four? Coup number four today, so let's do it. All right, so I had a dirt hole set here. There's a trail going up and down the fence on both edges of the fence, and the one on the other side cuts across right here. So as most I can tell, it's mostly a coon trail, but what we did, uh, I made a dirt hole set like a predator style and then I dug a hole back in the grass here in the dirt and since being I knew it was like a coon trail I said I baited it with half a rainbow trout and I threw a little bit of uh, Violator 7 lure back here in the grass. Uh, of course non-target animal we caught a, caught a possum. Um, it still counts as a catch so it is a fur bear and it's another another nest raider we got rid of. You know you're not going to get no more turkey eggs, quail eggs. Uh, we're saving, saving, the, saving the game bird population by taking these fellers out. So we're going to get them taken care of, move on. Got a couple more traps to check in here by the pond, and we're going to be done checking for the day. Hopefully, we can get some more traps out today to show you guys tomorrow. So, here we go. All right, here we go, another coon. Uh, we have it. We caught the possum a little bit ago, as you guys seen. Came right down this fence row. And the reason I picked this spot right here, because going right to the pond, you see the opening the cattle are using, well, you know the coons and stuff are using that to get to the pond too, this opening between the tree and the fence post. Um, Caught him at a DP, a dog proof, a duke, and the same bait I've been using, the candy corn special. So uh, anyway, we're getting taken care of. We got another trap here on the uh, dam over here. And we knew something in the trap whenever we pulled up, just through the fact that cows are gathered around this coon here. And I think we might have another one on the stand here, the way the coons are acting. They're all, I don't mean, the coons, the cows are acting. They're gathered up on that dam too. So uh, it'd be awesome to go two for two up this pond. So let's go see what we got, guys. So you're all, if you all are curious what I'm using for bait today to catch my coons, it's honestly, last summer I got bored in the house. I raided the pantry. What I did, I got a bunch of candy corn 
and I mixed up uh, Honey Nut Cheerios, uh, Lucky Charms. We got maple brown sugar honey. I mean, um, maple brown sugar uh, mini wheat. There is uh, crushed pop tarts, old cotton candy, anything that was sweet. I threw in this bucket and mix it up. And all I'll do is fill that up, put my DP through, good to go. And that's about all it is. I mean, if you can just raid your pantry and find anything sweet that you just don't want anymore, it's out of date. Make coon bait out of it. Don't throw it away. It's good bait. Especially for these dog proof traps, even live traps. All right, so we got a big old, uh, big old dark coon here in this uh, Duke. Uh, dog proof trap again my favorite bait I've been using all all week has been that uh, that candy corn I call it the coon candy mix I've been using <laughs> anyway there's a trail come right here at the base of this bluff behind us it comes right across the, uh, the, the path here and it goes right down here to, to the main Floyd Creek so anyway um, we're gonna get this trap reset take care of the coon gonna, and move on down and check some more traps push in the spring and put that lever and hook him right here at the notch. And you're good to go. You stick it in the ground right here at the trail. The trail is right in the middle of the catch circle. Here, you do that. I'm tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want it right in there. Take her down there. We want about probably seven or eight inches. Not even that. I don't care if it's five or six inches. It's a good little mouse hole. Thank you. I got it there for a good trap bed. Okay, let's go with the trap. We're using the MB650 here. Oh, yeah. All right, so, I'm going to set up the trap. I'm facing it. A lot of people like doing the dog in. I like doing it kind of diagonal a lot of times. Just like that. That's a good our stake, it's hammering in. You don't want them to, uh, when they step on the jaws or anything, you do not want that trap to move. Trap covered up. Stuff there. I don't like using that clay very good. I don't know how much good loose dirt I got anywhere else.
Now I need to find a spot. The, the pan of that trap is right there. So I need to I need to make sure I need to have that bobcat targeted where he will set his foot right there. And bobcats, you can about take him right to it. So what I'm gonna do here really, I'm gonna grab that stick and put it right there. And I'll probably put another one. I think I'll play a hiss for here to work. A little bit too thick for what I'm wanting, but I'm gonna probably put him a little there, a little chunk of wood. The predators want want a pretty easy spot to set their foot. That's gonna be right there in that good soft dirt. So now all I gotta do is put our lure and bait, guys, and we're ready to go. I'm gonna stick that little stick right there in that cat mandu. I'm gonna sit right back there in the hole. Just like that. Alrighty. I'm actually gonna push it back a little bit further. I'm back for as a hole as I can get it. There we go. Now we're gonna get that Violator 7. I'm gonna smear it right here on that log. We're gonna put that log but right there on top of the hole. Just like that. So we got a Catman Dew down there, a Violator 7 there. Two different sets. Really, the more sense you got, the better off you're going to be. So we got that ready to go. Let's move on. Got a couple more places on the property to go check traps. We got quite a few ways to go. Let's do it. It's the look of a confused man. Also, that probably, it probably dug my trap up, smelt my trap and dug it up. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it did. And then it set it off and it ran away or something. <laughs> Alright, we caught a heck of a nice coon in this predator set I made here. This is the one I made where that den was already pre-made and went back 14 inches. And yesterday I threw a quarter of a, like a whole front quarter of a beaver back there in that den. A little bit of Violator 7 up there on the wall up top. And uh, like even though it was set for a coyote and bobcat and fox, we got a really nice coon in this trap. I'm actually really excited. Um, even though it's just a coon, it's, it's, it's a catch, you know. It's, it's always fun to catch something like this, especially in these, in these predator sets. Oh man, look at that. that he's hiding from us now. It'd be kind of fun getting him out of there. If I can get him a little... Yeah, it'd be kind of fun getting him out of there, but we'll get him out eventually. So anyway, we're gonna get him taken care of. We're pulling our traps today. I'm gonna try to focus on shooting, shooting some deer this weekend. It's uh, archery season, late archery season here in Missouri. And antlerless season for rifle. And gun is also starts this weekend, and I really want to get some jerky and some uh, and some summer sausage made. So right, we're gonna pull our traps for now, and maybe set uh, set them back next week and go from there. All right, let's dispatch this coon and move on to our next sets. All right, another dirt hole set for a coyote or a predator, and another coon. <laughs> and so, like I said, I'm not ashamed of catching coons in these sets. Uh, to me, a coon is just as much as a trophy. They're not worth as much, but they're still much, just as much as a trophy. You know, you catch these critters, you're saving your turkey nest, your quail nest, pheasant nest. Um, you're helping your, your small game birds get a rise. So, uh, we're going to dispatch this animal, and we got a couple more sets here in this bottom before we move on to the next location. Let's get them! Alright, so we got a possum here in the trap here at the old barn. And uh, this is the third critter we caught here. 
this week we caught two coons and this possum here in this in this uh, DP and uh, again using that candy corn bait uh, really I don't like possums but really you are doing good by catching these critters again like I said before you're saving your your game bird nest a lot and uh, it's just a good thing to get these possums out you know you got to control the populations of all the animals and this is one of them you do got to maintain so let's get him dispatched and move on got a few more traps to check before the day is over all right guys coon number two after a night of straight line winds pretty surprising I caught him right here at this old cattle pond I came up here yesterday to set some muskrat traps and you can see the uh, muskrat huts out there there's several of them out there see that great big one right out there in the middle right in there the thing is I couldn't there's a couple more there I couldn't get any traps set right now because the cattle on this on the edge are so chomped down. I know there's muskrats in here, but they're staying out there in them huts and then they're feeding that and everything. So anyway, I thought, well, if I can't catch a muskrat here, we're going to set a coon trap. There was a few coon tracks coming around on, on the side of the on the side of the pond. And same thing, I knew it was supposed to be a little bit of rain in these straight line of winds. So I went ahead and baited it up with some ocean of whitefish pate canned cat food all right so cool coon number two after a straight line win got one more trap to check for the morning yeah, we're gonna call our quits and go home and get some work done so we're gonna dispatch this coon move on hopefully See if we can maybe get a coyote hunt in today. I don't know. We gotta get some more fur going, so maybe get a coyote her hunt in and go from there. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of Missouri Hometown Hunters. Now, trapping is a tradition that seems to be fading, and um, there's just no money in it anymore. But money shouldn't be the reason why we trap. It should be for predator control. It should be to get more people into the outdoors and just kids and other adults as well. And that's just another opportunity we can take to get other people in the outdoors and have, have fun. So um, it's, it's a heritage I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trapping until the day I die. And I'm really hoping to get my kids into it. You can see my daughter seemed to like it right there. And my, my son, no one, he's, he's about to turn one i cannot wait to get him in the outdoors and really in the trapping so um anyway i'm not going to give it up i'm going to keep going and going so anyway this is missouri hometown hunters feel free to like us on facebook subscribe to our youtube channel and you all have a great day this is hh in the mo 